today's show, find out how the new skipper's settling in. Riley Knight reveals his rewarding off-field role and we catch up with a promising young midfielder. Hi everyone and welcome to the Optus Crow Show. I'm Alana Smith. Well, when Rory Sloan was sidelined with a fractured hand, the club had the important task of appointing a stand-in skipper. The Crows leadership group isn't short of experience or talent, but this time the coaches opted for youth and selected Tom Duday as their interim leader. Adelaide were confident the young defender would be the best man for the job, despite having played a total of just 26 AFL games. We caught up with the 23-year-old after his first match as Crows captain. Duday, the captain, acting captain tonight. To be picked to lead this team going forward whilst Sloan is out, it's a, it's a big honour and yeah, fills me with pride. Least experienced member of any leadership group in the competition, but uh, Brodie Smith was quoted during the week saying he was 30 years of age the day he walked into the place. I feel like 2018 sort of gave me a good insight into AFL life. I got to play with a lot of senior players and um, how to work with them in game and off the field. And then coaching last year was more about development and seeing the game from a different angle. And obviously that's all come together to then um, um, the work I've done off the field and on the field has put me in the leadership group and now this opportunity has come up. So an interesting journey but I feel like all the different steps along the way have paved the way for me to end up here. Sends it to full forward, there's two on one against Duda. Duda, he does best. I suppose the biggest part for me is obviously being in the leadership group, learning from, from Sloaney a lot, learning from Lynchy, Smithers and Crouchy. comes down to respect. I've learned a lot about that with, with Lynchy and Sloaney because they're really good in that area. Um, always try to keep it light-hearted, which Smithers is really good with, and then make sure that when you're on the track and when you're on the ground, it's, it's, you're a competitive demon, and that's where Matty Crouch and, and Sloaney is really good as well. So from those leaders, I've tried to take everything I can and pick their brains, but then also from everyone around the club, just about looking after each other and um, trying to develop those relationships to a point where you feel comfortable and everyone's in it for the same reason. As a playing group, we're still upbeat. We know that the things that we've done the past few weeks have really led to improvement on field. As much as the wins haven't come and um, we've had some lapses in game, the positivity around the group at training, in meetings, um, flush run, whatever it be, weights, is eventually going to hopefully lead us to some wins and we're all confident that they'll, they'll come soon enough. Midfielder Harry Schoenberg was drafted to the Crows with pick 24 last year following his impressive performance for South Australia's under 18 side. But the road to West Lakes wasn't easy as Schoenberg was initially overlooked for state selection during his last year at school. I think just the coronavirus break was probably the hardest thing. Um, I just got settled into into the club for the first couple months and was really enjoying my time being here. And obviously, when that hit, we had to all go home and separate. And I think I've handled it pretty well. It's been really good with all the boys. Um, obviously, living in Adelaide also helped. So I hadn't had to go back over state during the coronavirus break, which was good. So I was able to stay in Adelaide and still be able to do training with all the older boys, So, which was really good. I think sort of just getting yourself in a routine so your whole life sort of revolves around the footy so you got to come in and making sure your training standards are up and making sure you're on time so I think my routine's probably something I wouldn't say I found difficult but just different so um, which I've been working on. Oh, I think my main focus was always to try and get drafted just play good footy so I never really had any doubt just tried to stay positive and confident in my footies. I think it has sunk in but it's still been good. It's just like just like a normal training session really you're coming here every day to train with your mate the quality of the footy has still been really high and obviously um, we've been playing against seconds in the AFL teams as well so that's been good so um, we've been training really well and obviously it's been performing on the track as well. Paul Seisman's been a great influencer for me so he's been helping me out. I've, I live with him in his front house so he's been helping me out with my routine and training standards and also during the coronavirus break Matty Crouch was outstanding with me. Um, obviously I came back to Adelaide and trained with him um, yeah, and he really helped me through that period of time. And they've always given me positive feedback and if I do need help they're always there so it's just great hearing from them especially the amount of games I've played and how they perform so yeah it's great. We've got 
plenty more to come on the show and after the break we find out what Riley Knight's been up to on the sidelines. A great avenue to keep connected um, with the group and really feel fresh and, and rejuvenated when I come into the club. Welcome back to the Optus Crows Show, I'm Mark Pickley. Crows utility Riley Knight is yet to play a game this year after recovering from Achilles surgery in early March. Whilst completing his rehabilitation program, the 25-year-old also found the time to build new skills as a mentor to the club's younger players. We had a chat to Knighter to find out what he enjoyed most about working with the Crows youth. Riley Knight with a ribbon on it. After I had my Achilles surgery, um, Heath Uni approached me and asked me if I'd be interested in um, working with a younger midfield group um, in the reserves over the weeks that I was injured, which was really good. So yeah, I was able to get in there and uh, help out some, uh, some of the younger guys coming through, um, helping with some structures, um, stuff on game day, um, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was a great opportunity. A great avenue to keep connected um, with the group and really feel fresh and, and rejuvenated when I come into the club knowing that um, you know, I'm helping some younger guys get better and, and still driving the footy club forward. I think when you have injuries you can get caught in just going into, into self mode and um, it can become a bit of a drag and to be able to be given that role by Heath and you know, really start to see the benefit and, and these guys grow as footballers, it gives you a really great sense of achievement and um, what these what you're doing for these kids and um, that keeps you really fresh. Might slip it over to Wright, he does. Wright can do the same. Over to Riley Knight, kicks his first goal in the AFL. Funnily enough, Matty Wright, who's our forward, uh, development forward coach now, uh, he took me in when I first got to the footy club and we built a great relationship there. And then I um, also had Richie Douglas as well. He mentored me in my first couple of years. We played um, a pretty similar role. McKay, one more and Knight. It's probably their best bit of team play all day. I think as you grow and develop as a footballer and you spend longer in the system, I think you get more comfortable in different situations and you can really express yourself um, in a leadership aspect um, in different ways. And I think Dougie's style really helped me because he had a really great connection with a lot of the younger guys, but then he had the ability to also challenge the older guys. So for myself, that's something that I've really tried to, to model um, my leadership on and um, you know, to be able to have a really great connection with the younger guys and, and help them and develop them, but also still challenge the older guys and um, hold them accountable to what we want to be known for and what we stand for. I've had uh, four weeks back now, which has been great. Um, it's been a bit of a challenge, obviously. Um, we're not playing the sample this year, so uh, we've, we've been playing 13 on 13 or, or 16 on 16, and um, you know, no one on the bench. Um, longer quarters, we're playing six, eight um, quarters. It's a lot better than obviously training and, and just being by yourself on a Saturday. So um, yeah, if we can keep playing games like that, it's great. If not, then we'll just keep training. The only place you can find all the official Crows news is at afc.com.au. Connect with the club via their social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And make sure you're following at the Crows Show on Twitter for even more footy stories. AFL commentators have the important job of bringing the game to life on both radio and television. It's a challenging profession and there's a lot of preparation required for our favourite voices to call a single game of footy. In 2017, we were a fly on the wall while Channel 7's Basil Zemplis commentated on a Crows match at Adelaide Oval. Today, we're revisiting the experience thanks to Bendigo Bank. Cameron is in absolutely everything. What a game he's playing, Jacob. To prepare for a game of AFL football, it generally depends on on if you've seen a lot of that team or not. As a minimum, I'll watch the team's previous game, but if I haven't seen that team much, I might go two or three games back. If I've done them a bit, then probably a, a, a game is enough, sometimes even a half of footy. You rely on the stats man to feed you bits and pieces that you might not be aware of. Uh, going into the game, I like to have one A4 piece of paper with all the things that I think I might need during the game. A bit on both sides, a bit on a few of the players, maybe a clever line or a quirky line, and I find if it's nice and simple, just one page, it works the best for me. Lever in the road, chips the ball short, and the mark's taken by Riley Knight. Eddie, he marks, he plays on for four. Lock it in, Eddie. 
AFL football is different to any of the other sports you call and there's more players on the field, it's a bigger field, they're going all over the place and they don't have to line up in positions but gee when you get it right you feel good and, and the big moments in football I think are as big as anything. I wish I was as good as Bruce McAvaney who could see something and it seems to stay in there forever, I'm not like that. So I have to work harder at it and I do put in the work. Look I'm a Perth boy so I'm a Dennis committee man as much as I love Bruce. Bruce stands up for every game. Dennis used to sit down and a lot of his call off the monitor and so that's the way I learnt as well. So mainly off the monitor for me when I'm calling the game. 56 seconds left on the clock. Adelaide lead by three points. Probably my most poignant and probably the game that meant the most to the most people here at the Adelaide Oval, the first game after Phil Walsh died. It was a showdown. I called it with Bruce and Lee Matthews. It was an amazing finish. And for Adelaide to win, given everything that had happened, it was really special to be a part of. Coming up, we catch up with Crows Live Wire, Ned McHenry. week on the Optus Crow Show we're taking a look back at some of the club's most historic victories and today we're taking you back to 2009 where the Crows ended three years of finals heartbreak by defeating Essendon at Football Park. Adelaide kicked a club record 26 goals in the elimination final with five of those majors belonging to Jason Porplesia. Andrew McLeod also impressed in the huge 96 point victory finishing with 31 disposals. Let's take a look back at the clash thanks to the club's major partner, Toyota. There was a bit of pressure going in. Neil Craig, his last three finals have been losing finals and we we're in pretty good form. I remember uh, we won our last three games going into that. We'd finished somewhere fifth or sixth, so we'd earned ourselves a home final and we were playing against the Bombers who uh, had a pretty fiery game the week before and um, Matty Lloyd was out suspended. Uh, so we were certainly hot favourites, but look, I guess the way that we won so emphatically, 26 goals to 10, it was um, yeah a big sort of weight off his shoulders. Probably the thing that stands out most is the, the selection uh, that, that the Bombers went in with. They only went in with one Ruckman, and he was really a makeshift Ruckman in Kale Hooker, with um, Ivan Marich and I think James Seller. We were always going to get our hand on the footy first, and what we saw was a complete domination by our Rucks. The number of times Marich hit it to Vince, and Vince ran the ball away from the stoppage, happened about 10 times. And Bernie was, I think he might have been 21 or 22 at the time, but he was still pretty new to AFL footy. He'd still only played probably around 30 games, and Got a bit of attention that night, he was targeted by uh, the Bombers but still found the way to, to be a really great player for us. I mean the criticism of Adelaide the last few years and the reason why maybe they haven't won finals, they haven't been able to kick winning scores. Gee, they can now. Can they now? Burton, yeah. Tippett, Knights, Henschel, Porplesia and the real wild card is Dangerfield. Right now he's part of one of the all time great forward lines all -time great of forward the line. Adelaide Crows. <laughs> when you look back we actually had a, a fairly uh, sort of broad, diverse forward group. Plenty of options there. Tippett was the one who was really coming on though and Ports was the real class amongst the group. So um, yeah, that night I think we kicked 26 goals and had 13 goal kickers, so there was a broad contribution. McLeod is on a roll, his dominant month continuing with another 30 touches. A timely answer to criticism from some quarters that he was past it. I think this night he had over 30 possessions. Uh, when when the games get big and there's, you know, finals are the, the big games you play and Andrew just got better and better. Kate picked it up brilliantly. A one bounce. He can keep going if he likes. Doesn't have to. Kicks another one and another goal scorer to the long list. And I guess it was disappointing. The week later we played Collingwood and we were in a winning position and of course Jack Anthony got that free kick late and, and kicked the goal. So it was disappointing perhaps not to go one step further and play in a prelim but within a couple of years, you know, blokes like Walker and Tippett, they were playing key roles in, you know, in another campaign in 2012 where we went, you know, within a whisker of playing in a grand final. So it's a really important developmental year. 
Crows have the privilege of playing back-to-back -back games at Adelaide Oval this week. With thanks to Flight Centre, let's fly around social media to see what the players have shared with their followers. Despite the Crows' disappointing start to the year, Ned McHenry is enjoying the opportunity to play footy at the elite level. The 20-year-old made his debut back in round two and has earned repeat appearances this season. And while he played up forward in the Crows' Sandful side last year, McHenry says he's more than happy with his new position in the midfield. Rainer, that caught the brilliant tackle by McHenry. It was certainly a dream. Like I have been really enjoying playing with some younger guys that I've been drafted with and some young guys at the footy club and then also a mix of guys that I've really looked up to since coming to this club, some senior guys and, and some guys that aren't that old as well. Um, so yeah, it has been a dream and to play with these guys is, is amazing and represent this club. Um, it's given me the opportunity is, yeah, it's been a dream. Hi Ned. <laughs> Um, we'd just like to say you've given us so many exciting and proud moments over your last 19 years, but we really think this one tops it. Uh, we love you and just enjoy the next few hours. It was a brilliant moment. I, I didn't know that was going on and I kind of saw the, saw the screen go up and, and saw my family on there. So that was um, another really awesome thing that the club's done. And, and during that week, um, my day every week, the, the club made a real effort to make it a pretty special one, obviously, in strange circumstances at the moment. Um, so yeah, to see mum and grandma even got a feature on there, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, it was just a great moment. And the, and the club did an awesome job at making sure my family was involved, which was, was really special. Dribbling ball forward. Yeah, we want to have fun. We, we want to enjoy what we're doing, and I think that's when you get the best out of people. But you know, there's also a balance, as you say, of when it's time to work, when it's time to compete. You know, we want to be ferocious as a footy club, so um, that's important. And I think, you know, win-loss ratio probably doesn't reflect um, a, a club that's really, you know, joyful and really positive to be around. But that's what this place is. So we want to keep doing that, and then we want to win as well as doing that. So that's going to be the balance. Coming up, Crows coach Matthew Nix answers a weekly question from a fan. It's been fantastic to see the crowds back at Adelaide Oval. Thanks to Optus, we've scrolled through social media to check on the lucky fans that got to attend last week's game against St Kilda. It was a sight we thought we wouldn't see in 2020 as Crow supporters took their seats at Adelaide Oval. Some shared footage of social distancing at the ground. While others weren't taking any chances inventing unique merchandise to stay safe in these uncertain times. It's time for senior coach Matthew Nix to answer a question from a fan thanks to Thomas Farms. This week's question is from Donny, who's interested to know what Nixie wants the Crows brand of footy to look like. Thanks for the question, Donny. Um, look, from a, I guess from a football perspective, we're looking to play a fast brand. Um, you know, moving the ball fluently. Uh, saw a little bit of that on the weekend, uh, where we were able to work on that game plan and get you know some of the game on our terms. Unfortunately, at this point, we're not quite consistent enough in that. Um, but that's the work on for us. Um, positive sign out of it was we we are starting to see some of that game. Thanks for your company. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget, you can keep up to date with all the latest Crows news at afc.com.au and by following the club on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. 
Stay tuned to Channel 7 for the Crows Clash against Essendon, and we'll see you next Sunday at 12pm. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye for now.